it's the awkward thing of like, we're, you know, the format of the show is pretending the cameras aren't there and we're just having a chat. Oh, OK, so, so we don't have to do an intro. We don't have to. Okay. Do you want to do an intro? I don't know. OK. Uh, <laughs> we will. So what we'll do, you won't be able to see it because it's done in post, but your name will appear and oh, your Twitter okay. handle. Then so that's, around, that's about, around about there. Like yeah, 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 yeah okay. exactly. So that should be I don't have to explain who I am. No, don't let me stop you. Like, <laughs> go for it if you want. OK. <laughs> Can we start again? So it's one of your episodes again. It is. So it's going to be fun and animated. And then the next episode will be boring old Jake talking about code again. So uh, but in the meantime, people can have fun. Hooray. <laughs> and it looks like we're going to be talking about, ah, OK. SVG paths. SVG paths. Um, so we're going to be demystifying SVG paths today. Um, but that's, like that's good because I have written SVG paths before, and I feel like yep, that's it. And then I close my eyes for five seconds and open them again. And I'm like, I don't understand a word of this. Yeah. I wrote it, but it's it's, it's write only, <laughs> write only syntax. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's demystifying SVG paths a bit because uh -huh. just just a bit, just like. A, a bit more. It's good to set expectations. Setting expectations. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just because SVG paths are complicated, because they're made to be read by computers and put together in graphics editors and to be as concise as possible. So they can be read and written by humans, but they can also be read and written by computers. And that's where like the disconnect comes, I think. And I'll often see SVG paths that are written by humans, and you can read them to some degree. Mm -hmm. And then you see something that a graphics editor spit out, and it gets really, really confusing. Yes. There would have been a spec discussion at some point where someone was saying the path should be done in XML, with every instruction being a separate tag, and then the other person arguing that it should be this concise thing that we have now. And I still, I think, probably the right thing happened. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, even the simplest thing is going to be like 100K. Or Huge. Yeah. yeah. And I have, I've had some SVG files in the past that have been huge already. Mm. So. Um, so a question for you, Jake. Have you ever hand coded an SVG? Yes, I have. <laughs> On a <laughs> like, scale of 1 to 10, how smug did you feel? Yeah, really. <laughs> so it, <laughs> the one I've got is uh, on Squoosh. Uh, there's, we, there's a little button um, for toggling uh, pixelated versus smoothed when you zoom in. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and the, the icon is a circle. And then you, when you click on it, it turns into a pixelated circle. Oh. And do it, and our icons are SVG and stuff. So the way I did it was I you scaled down a circle in Photoshop to find out where it would put all of the pixels, and then I did that as a path. And and yeah, exa exactly, exactly. Cool. As you said afterwards, I was like, I, smug. I think I might be the best programmer in the world. But again, <laughs> I have looked at that code since. I'm like, I'm never touching that again. <laughs> Absolutely not. I think that some people start off not quite sure how how to hand code an SVG. And I always like to think about SVG as like an infinite piece of grid paper mm. that you can just plot things onto. Um, and then the view box is kind of letting you know how big that piece of grid paper is. This is like easy mode hand coding SVG, like little hamburger. I like it because like it kind of there's a there's a similarity between the markup and the lines. <laughs> it looks... Yeah. Um, I see. So then it's it's just the it's the four corners of the. Hang on. What what what? what? Oh, okay. Okay. It's X and Y and then X and Y. So it's a line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I well, I had a breakdown for a second. There. <laughs> 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 okay, anyway. Well, we're in easy mode. So if Jake's having a breakdown, we're off to a we good just, start. We just had lunch <laughs> and. Uh... <laughs> My brain hasn't woken up yet. <laughs> All right, yes, a line is x, y, and x, y. Yeah, OK, yeah. this is going to be a difficult episode. <laughs> so me. there's a lot of that um, in SVG. There's x and y coordinates. So the view box, you've got um, the x and y coordinates of the starting point. And then you've got the width and height. And then the lines, you've got x and y coordinates for the starting point, x and y coordinates for the end points. Lots of x and y coordinates in SVG land. Yes. but. Curves are a little bit more complicated mm. because you start getting um, Bezier handles and a bit more maths and stuff involved. Um, so for this episode, we're not going to 
go into maths because that's not my strong suit. We're going to look at it as if we were um, in a graphics editor. So thinking about it in terms of handles and pulling out handles to make curves. Yes, yeah, and people have seen this sort of thing in Inkscape, Illustrator, Sketch, I imagine. Yeah, that this is the kind of basic way of drawing wibbly lines. Yeah. Or as yeah, Bezier goes with the correct name, I guess. Wibbly lines. Wibbly but lines. The, the output is wibbly lines. That's it's the best thing about pass that you can draw kind of complex shapes. Why are they called Bezier curves? I guess was there like a Samantha Bezier invented them and Samantha Bezier, sure. Yeah, cool. Yep. Excellent. Um, that's, that's a verifiable <laughs> fact. Wikipedia can reference this video. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, paths can be a little bit intimidating. Now this is this is quite a small path. Sometimes the things that you see coming out of graphics editors are just massive and very confusing. Mm. Um, and some of the confusing bits are that you can have commas in paths. You can also get rid of the commas completely, and you can have spaces instead. Is there a case where you do one or the other, or is it just pick pick one, whichever you fancy? You can pick whichever one you fancy. Right. So it can be a mix and mash of them. Um, you can also do um, line breaks. <laughs> so you could have the path on multiple different lines if you wanted to. Um, What's, wait, wait, what? Hang on. Um, sorry, I'm actually trying to read. <laughs> this is probably. How, so you've got like 3,010. Is that well? How does it? Because surely that's two different numbers, right? Yep, those are two different numbers. So you can also not have spaces. How does it? So know? you can have spaces. You can not have spaces, and you can have commas. Oh, that's not three thousand and ten. That's no. thirty L zero. Another thing that that makes me sad is the fact that um, if you have two path commands that are the same one after another, you can drop the second path command. OK. Yep. So, <laughs> so it all gets a bit confusing. But it's worth getting to know SVG Pass a little bit more, because they're sneaking into um, CSS a lot more. This is my dog. I was going to say, we have to do an introduction here. This is Brody, Aww. the best dog doing a little blip. <laughs> <laughs> and Brody is clipped with a clip path that is using path, the path function, Excellent. which is Still a little shaky browser-wise. I'm I'm not certain exactly the browser support. I think it's yeah. Clip path is well supported. Whether the path syntax is path or not, syntax, I don't know. yeah. But I've definitely seen like animating across paths done. But again, yeah, not sure of the, the the full support. Yeah. So the path function, I think that was CSS shapes level two. It got added with the motion path module. So I think oh, it's being okay. like but back. Added into back added other, into, back added into back. other things. Is that <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna say that we're yep. gonna go with that. And yeah, so you can also oh, that's satisfying. Now yeah. um, morph between paths in CSS. So this is in Chrome, um, and you have to make sure that the paths have exactly the same number of points. Yes. In order to do that, um, if they don't have the same number of points, you can use. Um, like a JavaScript animation library like GreenSock morph the SVG. Does it? Do you have any idea how that decides where it adds the points? Like how it decides where it's going to add the extra points? It rips through all the path data and does lots of maths and adds lots of things. Maths. Lots Brilliant. of maths that I don't understand, and then you don't have to worry about it. Brilliant. Yep. Excellent stuff. <laughs> and we can also do hey. animating things along paths. Um, so this is offset path. The motion path module. That's the bit I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, That's super so exciting. Nice. And again, that means that you can have these complex animations, but just happening on the compositor. It's, yeah. Yeah, and this is nice. this is really exciting for animation because often, um, you know, computers when you say I want to move something between here and here, it will just go in a straight line because that makes the most sense. Yep. But it's not necessarily going to feel the most natural. Like curved motions are really nice and natural, so you can use motion paths just hidden motion paths to animate things along more kind of natural tra trajectories. Very good. And again, for more browser support, you can use um, GSAP. Nice. So yeah, back to our really confusing path. We can format SVG paths like this, which I like a lot more if I'm writing out paths oh, or true. trying to read them. Yeah, you said before that, I, that you could have line breaks, and I never fully processed that. This is Readable. This is nice, yeah. Much nicer. So what we've got here is we've got 
the commands are all the letters, and then the numbers on the right hand side are coordinates. Very nice. Yeah. Um, and you can see that some of the commands have one set of coordinates and other ones have more coordinates. And it's more the complicated. Case matters. Ones. Yes, and yeah. the case matters. Uppercase, oh, da, 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 are absolute commands. Um, and lowercase are relative commands. And that means um, with absolute, you're drawing to a particular point on the SVG canvas. So you're saying, like, go along 10 on the x axis and 10 on the y axis and draw a point there. Relative, you're drawing the point relative to the previous point. Yes. The thing that I love the most about relative commands, um, when you get stuff out of a graphics editor, often you get a mixture of absolute and relative, which Presumably is a little bit confusing. Shortest. Whichever's shortest, I guess. Yeah. Um, but you can um, save out as all relative. And the coolest thing about that is that then the first path coordinate, if you change that, you can move around where the SVG Ooh. path is on the view box. So it allows you to kind of mess around with positioning a lot easier. I had not thought of that. Yeah, it becomes just a translate. Yeah, it becomes nice. just a translate. And that's that's like one of the hardest things about mixed relative and absolute paths is that you can't easily move your the SVG element around without um, without adding transforms. Like mm. you can't change the actual geometry um, and the positioning of it. So of course. relative commands are where it's at. <laughs> Um, and then here we've got x and y coordinates. So I don't know whether, did you ever have a little turtle fella at yes. school when yes. you were younger, the little robots that you move around? Yep. Oh, no. We, oh, no. I didn't go to a did school that could have... afford an actual <gasps> robot. No, you didn't we have had an a actual... dot on the screen, though. And it was bit, like, it was about five pixels, but we were told it was a turtle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK, well, I had an actual robot. I had a little Roma. It was called. It's called yeah. Roma. It's a little Amazing. white thing, and it had little eyes on, and you moved it forwards or left or right. Brilliant. And it had um, a pen down and a pen up function as well. So you could put it on a piece of paper, and it would draw what? shapes would on draw. the paper. Yeah. I obviously went to a yep. better infant school than Jake. Yeah. <laughs> what? Infant school? Yeah. <laughs> OK, so <laughs> we're going we're gonna to give you that experience now. Oh, thank you. OK. Yeah, I'm sorry that you missed out when you were small. <laughs> So like the first command here, we've got m1010, and that's saying move to 10 on the x-axis and 10 on the y-axis. So we're going to move our little turtle. Um, and then we're going to draw a line. This is an absolute line. So we're going to draw the line to 30. Yep. 30. So, oh, that's exciting. There we go. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> and then we're going to do a relative line. And we're going to do relative line 20 units down. Excellent. Yeah. So those are like basic line commands. And we've got some other line commands that are like shorthand line commands. So H is horizontal line. Mm -hmm. So we can do a little horizontal line. What do you think V is? I reckon it might be vertical. Yeah, is it? Is that right? Job. Yeah. Excellent. And it's relative again because it's lowercase. Yeah, right. relative again. Okay. Lowercase. Cool. Right. Don't ask me any questions about this. <laughs> <laughs> so we're sticking just to cubic Bezier's for this because um, qu quadratic. <laughs> too, there's too many points. It's too confusing. Um, so we're just going to stick to like the two most basic curve commands. So this is just a curve, um, and it's got three coordinates. The last one is the end value that we're going to. And then the first two are the Bezier handle points. Right. So it's going to do that. Yeah. 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 Is it, is it, yeah. OK. Oh. You can see that they've got the Bezier handles there. So you can imagine if you moved those Bezier handle points the curve would change. Yep. And this is really cool for animation as well, because once you know what individual path points are, if you wanted to animate a certain point of the path, you could just interpolate that particular point Very nice. in order to do that. And it's nice and simple. Um, 
So then this is smooth curve two. And smooth curve two is it's really nice to pair with the curve command because you get an assumed Bezier handle that reflects the, the last Bezier handle from the curve. Exactly. Oh. oh, so this is carrying on from the, the C one. Yeah, right? carries on nice. from the C one. And because it, it reflects automatically the first Bezier um, curve, you get a really nice smooth continuation. Whereas it's actually quite hard to get smooth continuations. If you don't have that, you have to do more maths. Yeah, I've um, always just done that manually in the past, but, but doing exactly what you say there. So I would have the first handle would be positive 20 from, yeah. from the position, which is, is what it's going to, that would be what it does automatically, isn't automatically, it? Automatically, yes. Very nice. All right. So if we do that, we've got, it's our last little thing. It's very good. And our turtles at our destination. Whoop. <laughs> I feel like I've been to a fancy infant school. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so, that's, that's the vibe I was going for. <laughs> so yeah, just another little bit of fun. Um, I used, uh, there's a GSAP utility um, where you can create a motion path oh. in, the, in the browser. You can edit it. So um, if you're getting your head around curve, like um, if you're getting your head around SVG paths, and you want to have a play around, you can use this on CodePen, and you can just create an editable path in the browser. Interesting. And it's, it's not just, uh, it's changing the path entirely there, because you can see that the one that's supposed to be reflected stops being reflected. So it's actually changing the, yeah. the whole command. Oh, okay, and you can cool. save out the, the path as well. Very nice. It's just a little fun thing to play around with. Very yeah, do you, do you feel like you understand SVG paths a little bit more? Well, there's the infant school thing, which is certainly a plus. But yes, I do, actually. And it's, I think, probably because I have written SVG paths before, I think probably the biggest takeaway, which for me is writing them with line breaks, which I know is such a small thing. Yeah. But that, like, there's so much code we've, I, I've got in my projects where I'm not doing that for no good reason. And yeah, yeah that even just like that Makes kind of it thing nice and readable. Makes it so much more readable. We forgot last time to do introductions. You want to do introductions every time? OK. Hi, this is HTTP 203, and I'm Jake Archibald. And sitting alongside me <laughs> is Cassie Evans from off of the Green Sock. <laughs> <laughs> is that good? <laughs> <laughs>